The numbers speak for themselves. Facebook is the digital tea shop for Myanmar. It has a history in this country. It's played a role in the Rohingya refugee crisis and the genocide before it. Facebook incited violence against Rohingyas. We are not saying this. This was the assessment of United Nations investigators two years ago. Facebook incited violence. Our next report tells you more about Facebook's role and history in Myanmar. The Rohingya refugee crisis began with an alleged genocide in the Rakhine state. Thousands died. Lakhs were displaced. All this happened almost five years ago. To this day, the world doesn't know the exact number of casualties. The displacement of Rohingyas was one of the biggest humanitarian crises of this century, and a social networking giant fueled it. UN investigators found that Facebook played a leading role in the alleged genocide. I'm afraid that Facebook has now turned into a beast and not what it originally intended. It was used to convey public messages, but we know that the ultra-nationalist Buddhists have their own Facebooks and are really inciting a lot of violence and a lot of hatred against the Rohingya or other ethnic minorities. The revelations were shocking. The UN investigators named Facebook in their report, calling it a useful instrument to spread hate. Another report claims Facebook was turned into a tool for ethnic cleansing in Myanmar. With the military driving the anti-Rohingya propaganda through posts that incited murder and rape. Stories like these, along with the revelations from the UN investigators, did not go unnoticed in Washington. When Mark Zuckerberg appeared before lawmakers around three years ago, he was grilled over Facebook's role in Myanmar's genocide. A lawmaker called Facebook the breeding ground for hate speech against Rohingyas. She showed a post. It called for the death of Muslim journalists in Myanmar. Reports say Facebook had initially refused to take down this post. Zuckerberg admitted a lot more needs to be done. But he hasn't really done it. An investigation by news agency Reuters found that thousands of hate posts were still up, even after Zuckerberg's pledge to the U.S. lawmakers. One of them called on the people to fight the Rohingyas, the way Hitler did the Jews. Another post showed a news article from an army-controlled publication. A user here wrote about destroying the Rohingya race. The public scrutiny forced Facebook to act. By December 2018, it removed 425 Facebook pages, 17 Facebook groups, and 15 Instagram accounts. Facebook claimed these accounts were disguised as news and entertainment pages, but they actually belonged to Myanmar's military. In addition, 20 individuals and organizations were banned. This included General Min Ong Lain, the commander-in-chief of Myanmar's armed forces the same general who led the coup in Myanmar. For those who lost their lives in Rakhine, this ban was simply too little, too late. Three years after it banned the general, Facebook now faces the challenge of protecting Myanmar's democracy. The company has vowed to be on the right side of history this time. In an internal message, a Facebook official said they are proactively moderating content on the platform but military agents could still be infiltrating online groups to sow distrust. Bureau Report, We On, World Is One. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.